Okay, so I'm very excited because now we've done all that work so we can finish putting together the cash budget. So I'm going to call this Bryn Inc. And this is our cash budget. And we'll put March 31st. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these over. January, February, March quarter. And I'm going to start with my cash balance at the beginning. So we know it because our, oh, I can't reference it. Our cash ending for December is on our balance sheet, so the cash is 48000 So that's what I'm going to use. Now, what I want to do is then add in my collections from sales. And so I just go up to the spreadsheet where I calculated that, and I'm just going to grab those numbers. So it's from the cash collections, 304. And I'll just zoom those numbers over. And technically, when we add those two together, it's going to be total cash available. So you're going to take your 48,000 and add your 304. So I don't actually know what my beginning cash balances are for February and March. So I'll just kind of hold off on subtotaling those ones. So I'll just go through January first. And now I'm going to subtract all of my cash payments. And we call them disbursements. Okay. So the first schedule that I did was purchase of inventory. And I want to show these as negative because I like to see my cash payments going out. So my inventory purchases were from here, 228, 292, and 240. Then I had a separate one for operating expenses. And that budget is here, 129, 145, and 121. So I have seen people combine these two and also combine the extra payments that you're making. So usually those are cash purchases of equipment. Um, maybe they're um, payments on dividends, maybe they're paying their income taxes. So I'm just going to expand the cash budget a little bit and just put them down here. So if I look through all of the letters, I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So in H it does tell me that during February, the company will purchase a new photocopy machine for 1500 cash. So I'm going to put that in February. So that was 1500. And then it says in March we're going to buy other equipment for 84,500. Then in I, it says during January, the company will declare and pay 45000 in cash dividends. And they said to do that in January. So this question doesn't have income tax. But if you did, then if you had to pay your income tax, it would go down here. So any other big payments you can put in this section. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to add these up now. And I'll call this total disbursements. So I'm just highlighting the stuff going out. So I will put a line right here. So now what I need to do is figure out if I have more cash or if I don't have enough cash. So this is called excess or deficiency of cash. So I'm going to take my 352, so that includes your opening bank balance, and then subtract your cash out. So, ooh, I'm actually short by 50,000. So what happens then is we have to assume that we need to borrow from the bank, so we'll probably have a line of credit to borrow against. And when I'm borrowing, there's two things that are happening. You're going to have to repay with interest. And also, you might want to keep a safety net in your cash bank account, just in case we're off on any of our estimates. So in Part J, it tells us the company must maintain a minimum cash balance of 30000 Okay, got that. And then it tells us that in Part J, borrowing and repayments of principal must be in multiples of a thousand. So I'm trying to keep my bash ba cash balance at 30. I can't borrow 999. It has to be a thousand. So keeping that in mind, this is probably the hardest part of the cash budget is we're going to figure out our financing. So I've got borrowing, repayments, and our payments of interest. And then that'll be our total financing. And then our cash balance. Ending. Okay, so we know that we want this to be about 30,000 and we can only borrow in increments of a thousand. So I'm going to go like this. I know that it at least has to be 50. So I'm just going to play kind of like a guessing game. So I'm going to. Add up your borrowing. So if we borrow 50, repay, and have interest, sum those together. So then that'll give us our total financing. And then if we take our excess cash and add our total financing, that'll give us our ending balance. So if I borrow 50,000, then that'll leave me with only zero in our bank account. And this always needs to be 30. Or above. So I know if I add on an extra 30, so if I borrow 80, there, that brings us exactly to 30. So that's exactly how much uh, we need to borrow, 80,000. So now this cash balance is the beginning balance for February. So we'll transfer it like that. So now I can add this. Beginning plus your collections. This is how much I have available. Subtract all of our cash payments. So that's 439. Take the difference. And that's how much cash we're left with, 31,000. So Let's see what it says here. I would be tempted to repay a thousand to bring it to 31 or to bring it down to 30, but let's just see what it says. Oh, 
all repayments are made at the end of the month, borrowings and repayments of principal must be in multiples of a thousand. So the answer key says it's 31. I disagree. I think that the inch, I think we should repay a thousand because we can borrow and repay in increments of a let me just read this one more time. Maybe I'm misreading it. No, it says borrowings and repayments of principal must be in multiples of a thousand. Okay. So I'm going to keep this error in here just so then I can match the answer key when I put together the balance sheet and the income statement. But I'll run this through and then I'll show you what I would have done. Because I would have borrowed, I would have repaid a thousand dollars. Anyways, we'll just assume that we're happy with that. Then we'll go and pick up the 31 and let's add these again. So that's 571. I'm going to sum my cash out and then now we have lots of money, 125, 500. So we can repay the full amount. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate my interest. So I do want to show my repayment there. So I need to know what my stated rate of interest is. So it tells me in part J that the annual interest rate is 12%. When it shows you the 12%, that is it for the year. So I need to figure out my monthly interest. So let's do that first. So 80,000 times by 12%, that gives me the interest for the year. And if I divide that by 12, that'll give me the interest per month. So I just need to know how many months I have to pay the interest on. So it tells me that all borrowings are done at the beginning of the month and repayments are made at the end of the month. So the interest is paid only at the time of payment of principal. So that's a little confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it from the beginning of the month. So once you borrow the money, the clock starts. So I borrowed it on, I'm assuming January 1st, so I'd have January, February, repay at the end of the month, so that's March. That's three months. So then my repayments are 82400 and now my cash at the end of March is the 125500 minus everything we repaid with interest. So it's going to be 43100 So what I'm going to do now is just add them across. So my cash at the beginning of the year is the cash, which is the the beginning of the quarter. So it's January 1st cash. Then I'm going to add all my sales together. That's the cash that we collected and then just add that up. Then I'm going to add all my disbursements and then I can just carry this down and then just add them across. And then we'll just add across our borrowings. Just sum that down. And then the total financing. And so then when I add these two together, it should equal, oh, okay, it should equal 43,100. So I just have to see what I did wrong. Okay, so that, so technically 
these two amounts should be the same. So what I would double check is if you added wrong. So I'm going to go up to the top. So I did copy over the beginning balance, which is good. Another place where I think I made an error is just when I added this. So I think I summed across when really because of that 48,000, I need to be taking the 1332000 and then subtracting the 1286500. Yeah, that's what it was. So now that I did that, then it changed that back. And I'm not going to show uh, the difference between repaying a thousand here because then that would change the interest that I'm repaying and then also this would change to 79 and then the interest would be for the remaining and I want to make sure that I hit the answer key when I do the income statement in the balance sheet so just know that when we read through questions we do make a lot of assumptions and sometimes they are a bit different than the author of the solution and that's okay as long as it's logical then we would just have an alternate set of solutions but um, I just want to make sure that we get to the same place on our balance sheet and income statement.